Oh, well, hi there. The internet is a vast place filled with knowledge at the palm of my hand. You can find questions like, why is the earth flat? How many hate crimes have Mark Wahlberg committed? Two. The answer is two. Or did watching Digimon turn me into a furry? But I was wondering, can I use the internet with the combination of some kind of pop culture such as movies, TVs, or video games to understand basic information? Well today, we're going to find out if we can learn basic theology using Digimon. First question is, what is Digimon? Digimon is short for digital monsters. Using the term digi in the first word and mon in the second word to create Digimon. But more importantly, Digimon is the far superior version of Pokemon because our lions can kick the sh** out of your lions because we have swords and abs. Mm. Hey there, Leomon. The question we must ask now then, what is theology? Most people would say it's more of a philosophical question you have to find within yourself a certain need for something in a spiritual aspect. But thankfully, the internet, more specifically, dictionary.com, says this. Theology is the systematic study of nature of the divine and, more broadly, of religious beliefs. But I may have lied a little bit when I said we're going to talk about theology because we're not going to talk about all theology because then we get to have to talk about whether or not mythology is theology and I'm not touching that shit because I know people believe in <laughs> But we're actually going to be talking about Christian theology, more specifically the angels in Christian mythology. So let's be like Tom Hanks and let's go find our angels and demons. now. When we think of angels, we think of these divine creatures. Uh, some may be humanoid. Others are more like classical art paintings of these little, little baby-like creatures flying around. Or look at these angels. They're so cute and adorable, pretending that they're like Linus and Charlie Brown thinking about their lives. But they're angels. They don't need to do that. But then you have these like sick-ass angels who are like fighting demons and it looks like it's a metal album cover and then you have Tilda Swinton not that role but my favorite out of all of them is Ben Affleck I mean looking at him it's just like looking into heaven but are these depictions of angels the truest version of angels these humanoid beings the answer is no it's a lie they lied to us classical art lied to us look at the real picture of angels look at how disgusting they are they're these weird abomination chimera-like creatures with four heads and one's a human and then you have these things that are like the seraphims and the cherophims or whatever the hell they're called how many wings do they need why are they circled like this look at those eyes oh my god i'm gonna have nightmares and maybe some weird sex dreams what don't judge me okay let's just pull it back a little bit and we're remembering can Digimon teach us anything about angels and Christian theology? Well, it can teach you a lot more than your high school youth groups can. But enough about my high school indoctrination adventures. Let's go back and talking about what we can learn about angels in Digimon. Digimon can actually teach us a basic understanding about what angels are and how they work, as well as also make these nightmare creatures look really badass and pretty hot if you're into that. I'm not saying I am or anything like that. I love you so much, Angelomon. Digimon, there are a group of Digimon that are angels based on the different types of angels and groups in Christian theology. So we're going to start by going through the fact that in Christian mythology, there are three spheres of angels. And so we're going to start with the first sphere, of course, because it's the first one and I obviously know how to count, I'm not an idiot. The first sphere of angels are angels who worship God up front and close. Picture them like God's hype man, like, you know, when God's feeling down, they're like, nah, man, you should have kicked even Adam out. They seem pretty sus, bro. The Digimon based off of this first sphere of angels are very similar to their real life counterparts. They're called Serafimon, named after the Seraphim angels. Ophanimon, named after the Ophimin angels, and Cherubimon, named after the 
Cherubim Angels. In the Digimon world, they're called the Celestial Trio. Let's talk about Seraphimon. Seraphimon is named after the Seraphim Angels. They're the closest to God. He's kind of like that best friend that no one can really replace. You know what I'm talking about. Let's call that best friend Todd, and you've been there for him since day one, and he's been there for you. But then he decides to get married, but he doesn't choose you to be the best man, which I don't understand why, because like I was the one who set him up on that blind date with his future wife, Susan, but that's okay. I'm still one of the groomsmen. But then they know that you are a vegetarian and you get the menu for the RSVP, and it doesn't have a meat substitute. Then you find out that they did put the extra money in a no peanut cause Tiffany's Gam Gam is allergic, but you couldn't spend the money on an extra vegan substitute? What the f Todd? This is about me trying to educate people using a knockoff Pokemon. So Rafimon seems to do what Seraphim Angels would usually do in Christian mythology when it comes to God. Besides the fact that Digimon God lets Seraphimon cast divine punishment on evil beings, and Seraphim Angels don't really do that. Seraphim Angels' main job is to whisper songs of praise to God. I don't think they sing in a country twang, I just kinda hope they do. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this man. more like an Ophiman angel would do when it comes to casting judgment on people. Which leads me to Ophanimon. Ophanimon is the least like the counterpart of the angels they're supposed to represent the Ophiman. Ophanimon in Digimon lore sends out God's love to all digital creatures. She's kind of like that upper class rich midwestern mom who just wants you to do your best. I don't know how that feels because I was personally raised poor. Everything I touch <laughs> Ponymon may not act like an Ophiman, but they do show they have some visual representation of the Ophiman angels. The shoulder pads are shaped like chariot wheels, and Ophimans are nightmare wheels with eyes, so that's a representation of that. But they also have a representation of cherubs as well. Cherubs in Christian mythology are four-headed monster beasts. Ophanimon has all of these. And so this leads us to the lovable and adorable rabbit, Cherubimon. Cherubimon is the keeper of all knowledge into the digital world, so he's kind of like that weird kid you were in Quiz Bowl with who knows all the random facts, including the weird and uncomfortable ones. Lois could never have Superman's baby. Do you think her fallopian tubes can handle his sperm? One of my favorite weird facts that I know is uh, squirrels are the reason for most power outages. And the only reason I know that is because I drink Snapple. <laughs> Cherubimon is probably the closest to how cherubs are supposed to act in Christian mythology. Cherubimon also protects God just like cherubs do. But Celestial Digimon aren't the only important angel Digimon in the digital world. There are angel Digimon that represent the second sphere of angels. I put that in air quotes because they really, for the most part, I did my research these Digimon kinda don't represent the angels on how they work, but just on like name and design. So let's talk about the first angel in this sphere, uh, Dominionmon. Dominionmon is named after the Dominion angels. Dominion angels regulate what lesser angels do, but they never really show their face. So when I read this, this kinda sounds like that boss who doesn't do shit, takes all the credit, and then says they did all of it and doesn't thank you for anything. Yes, Jesse, I still remember what you did. Fuck you. But with Dominion Mon, there isn't really much lore about him in the digital world besides that, like, he looks really cool. Like, he looks dope as fuck. He is what I imagine a Christian Power Ranger would look like. The only thing I really know is that he has an anime as fuck technique called Final Excalibur, which is just a giant. Assassin's Creed wrist blade used to slash up evil. <laughs> so the next one we're gonna talk about is Clavis Angemon. Whoa, look out Sora, cause we have a new Keyblade wielder in town. So Clavis Angemon is based off of the Virtues Angels. And I'm going to say this again, he's not really. He 
doesn't do anything the virtue angels do. The virtue angels are followers of nature and they help with things like the moon and they have energies from that. They essentially sound like your vegan friend. I partake not in the meat, nor the breast milk, nor the ovum of any creature with a face. You know, the vegan friend that's like, yo man, if you quit eating meat, it'll lower our carbon footprint. And it's like, it's not really gonna lower the carbon footprint, it's more like a little ripple in a big ocean. But then they're like, nah man, your auras are just off. You need just to try meditation and CBD oil. And I know that that's just a little con for me to try to get into your Ponzi scheme by selling your essential oil. I don't know what Clavis Angemon and the Virtues have in common. The Digimon wiki just said that Clavismon is based off of the Virtues. But even his name, Clavis Angemon, doesn't mean anything with Virtues. Clavis is at an actually Latin for key, and he uses his keyblade to open up doors and destroy evil Digimon with the light within. Holy shit, I think I just figured out what Kingdom Hearts is about. Then we have the final angel of the second sphere, Slash Angemon. And Slash Angemon looks like how I would imagine angels looking like when I was 12. All cool and with all these swords, like, yeah man, shoes are cool, but what if we just added daggers? It's metal as The most surprising thing to me is that Slash Angemon is the closest to its counterpart. Slash Angemon is represented of the powers, and the powers job is their warrior angels that fight off evil, which that's what Slash Angemon does, like, he doesn't use those knives to cut butter. Maybe he does, I don't know. Digimon's weird. And now we have reached the third sphere of angels in Christian lore. These angels are what we recognize as the angels we would see. The archangels, the guardian angels, and the angels that look like humans and wings and they just fly around. Every other Angemon species besides Marine Angemon, who is a weird in-betweeny kind of thing, represent this angel group. So when we look at the archangels, both Magna Angemon and Anjuamon are supposed to represent them. So, because I simp for my queen, Anjuamon, we're not going to talk about Magna Anjuamon whatsoever at all in this video. And the term Archangel derives from the Greek word meaning Chief Angel. Archangels are the ones who govern countries, people, events. Fun fact, guess what? Archangels and Digimon don't actually do those things. Anjuamon is described as fighting evil relentlessly until it converts to the light. You know what that sounds like? That obsessively super Christian girl I went to high school with who goes, I respect your beliefs, but they're wrong, and then tries to pray the gay away because her friend told her she was a lesbian. Redefining marriage and telling us that marriage is not between a man and a woman? Come on, Alba, it's nonsense. So I said I wasn't gonna talk about Magna Angemon, but I just found out that they are basically Digimon law enforcement. They are cops, so it makes me a little bit more uncomfortable. They have two modes, apparently. They have a very more calm and collected priest mode, and then a very aggressive battle mode. And I get it, not all Magna Angemon are bad, but it kind of makes you think like maybe Black War Greymon wasn't being evil. And look, if we gotta choose between chasing you down or shooting you in the back, nine times out of 10, we're gonna shoot you. And then you have Angemon that represents your vanilla generic angels, which is fine because Angemon seems like that kind of guy. Like Angemon in Digimon lore leads Digimon to goodness and victory. And Man, I'd follow Angemon. Like, look at him. He's cool. He looks awesome. He's ripped. Like, he just seems like a good guy. Now what you're wondering, is there a guardian angel type Digimon? And yes, and this is going to be kind of a cop out, but I would say all angel Digimon are guardian angel Digimon if you are a partner Digimon with them, because guardian angels are essentially just JoJo stands that won't aura aura the shit out of your enemies, but guardian angel Digimon will. I just wish Digimon were real sometimes. So, 
Originally though, I was going to talk about demons in this Learning Basic Theology video, and then I realized Christian demonology is confusing as and maybe one day I'll talk about it, but today I'm not going to because it seems very complicated. But thank you for watching and I hope you learned some basic information that'll help you in your everyday life. Hey, it's me in the editing booth. I literally forgot to do an outro. Um, as you see, I was putting stuff away and I was like, oh no, I didn't do an outro. So I just wanted to say thank you for watching this video. Sorry it's been about a month and a half since I put out a video. And I know it's a little bit different, but I want to do more weird kind of like learning basic video essays like this. So if you want to support me, you can support me over on Patreon. The link is down below. Also, if you enjoy this, give it a like and share it around because that helps out too. Also, you can follow me on Twitter and you can see all my dumb weird hot shakes and stupid dokes. As well as, you know, I'm going to go back to some other video essays similar to the ones that I usually write. But I want to do more experimental stuff like this as well. And if you haven't heard this today, you are loved, you are cared for, and you matter. And whatever you're going through, you've got this cowboy. Later.